There is a question that is often asked. How do we increase the land utilization efficiency in spaces where solar panels are installed? In this video, we will attempt to answer this question. On this channel, Synergy Files, we aim to inspire budding engineers and technicians for a better, more sustainable world. Subscribe to this channel to get the updates of all our latest videos. One of the criticisms leveled against solar panels is the high amount of land use, particularly in large-scale solar farms. Car parks, walkways and bus shelters in urban centers have been used for mounting solar panels, but for large-scale energy generation, water reservoirs and abandoned quarries as well as farmland is now being considered. From a conservative estimate, the amount of solar panels installed around the world will be 16 gigawatts by the end of 2019. This means approximately 106 km square of solar panels have already been installed. Having plucked the low-hanging fruit in terms of land use, agricultural land is now being considered for solar farms. For farmers, this proposition may seem lucrative in the short run, but has long-term negative consequences, mainly the loss of agricultural land, which increases our food insecurity. Now, one might point to the existence of vast empty spaces in far-flung regions, but there are reasons for not installing solar panels in remote places. First is the infrastructure cost for laying down transmission wires. Second is the higher transmission losses incurred in bringing the power back to the population center. So how do we generate electric power close to densely populated areas while still utilizing land for other purposes? Thankfully, the answer to this was provided by Fraunhofer Institute. Research and subsequent pilot projects have shown that same agricultural land can be used for both growing crops and generating electricity. This emerging field is called agrophotovoltaics. The idea is to install semi-transparent solar panels at sufficient height from the ground using taller mounting frames. The height of the installed panels allows the space needed for the plants to grow underneath. Bigger gaps are maintained between the panels to allow more sunlight exposure when the altitude of the sun is high. During the times when the sun is at a lower altitude, the plants are exposed to all of the available sunlight. Through this technique, land use efficiency of 186% has been recorded. This figure requires some explanation. The land use efficiency here is the sum of crop yield efficiency and the electricity generation efficiency. So let's say if we were to use this land for only growing crops, we would get a particular amount of produce. And if we were to use this land only to generate electricity through solar panels, then we would get a particular amount of electricity units. By using agrophotovoltaic technique, scientists were able to get a crop yield of 103% for the potatoes grown while the unit produced for electricity were 83% compared to a neighboring field of similar area that was completely covered with solar panels. These tests were carried out in Hegelbach, Germany. The lower yield of the solar panels is understandable because we have to install them with larger gaps when used for agrophotovoltaics. But what is very pleasing to note is that the crop yield increased Scientists have also noted that crop yield would get even higher in areas where the summers are harsh. Partial shading keeps the plants and soil relatively cool, which also reduces the evaporation. Microclimate is created that allows certain berries to grow in very hot countries that would have otherwise not been possible. The movement of the sun through the sky also ensures even exposure of sunlight as the plant that may be shaded one hour would enjoy sunshine the next. So farmers now don't have to choose between food or fuel. With agrophotovoltaics, they can have both. Note that electric tractors have now made it to the market. Agrophotovoltaics are abbreviated as APV. So far, Japan, Korea, USA and Italy have APV systems that are fully functional while they're in pilot stages in Chile, India and Germany. Agrophotovoltaics is also being considered to reverse desertification. In arid regions, crops can be grown using this technique. 
The energy generated by the solar panels can be used to pump water from the ground. As mentioned before, evaporation is limited by partial shading. It can create livelihood opportunities for farmers in areas where lands are not ideal for agriculture. Farmland that may not be used for growing crops but is used for cattle and poultry to graze can also benefit from agrophotovoltaics as it allows grass and vegetation to grow underneath. The energy from the solar panels can be sold to the grid or can be used for running the dairy or poultry farm. We have already discussed solar greenhouse technology which has allowed Australia to grow 15% of its tomatoes in the most driest of areas where no fresh water was available. Link to that video is in the description. Further details that have been released by Fraunhofer Institute are present in the link below. And with this the video is concluded. If you learned something from the video, make sure to hit the like button. For more updates, subscribe to the channel. Thank you for your attention.